Hey everyone, today we're going to take a look at how you can set up snapshot replication to sync snapshots from a source Synology NAS to a destination Synology NAS. So this is a great option if you have multiple Synology NASs either on-site or off-site, but you're basically going to be able to sync a specific folder and the folder snapshots to a destination Synology NAS. So before we get started, I just want to mention that I have full written instructions for everything in the description of the video. So we're first going to take a look at how you can set this up, but a little later we're going to take a look at how you can actually recover the data if you need to. So first, you have to ensure that your Synology NAS is using the BTRFS file system. If you're not, then you're not going to be able to use this, and that goes for the source and the destination. However, that's true of regular snapshots as well on the local NAS. So if you don't have those set up and you do have the BTRFS file system, I suggest you check out that video. I'll leave a pop-up for that now. Uh, snapshots are definitely something that everybody should set up, but we're going to look at how you can replicate them to a different server. So like I said, open up that snapshot replication program, and then you're going to select replication and then create. A disclaimer will appear that you can read and then select next, and then you're going to see two options, local and remote. So basically, you're going to be able to replicate your snapshots to your local device or to a remote Synology NAS. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at how you can do that to a remote Synology NAS, but you should know that you can do it locally as well. So I'm selecting remote and then I'm going to click next. And at this point, you have to enter in the IP address of your destination Synology NAS. Once you do that, you're going to have to enter in the username and password that you'd like to connect with and then check off the uh, use encrypted connection box. Now at this point, you're going to have to click the advanced settings and you're going to have to check a few of these settings here. So the first thing is going to be the DSM login page. For your destination server, if you're using a port that is different from the default 5001, you have to change that. You also have to ensure that if you're using Synology's firewall, you have the DSM port and the shared folder port allowed. If you don't have that, when you select next, you're going to get an error and it's basically going to state where it failed to connect. So it's going to run through and check to make sure it can connect everywhere. If you can proceed, then everything's set up properly. If you can't, you're going to have to go back and try and figure out why it's not connecting. You can then select the volume that you'd like this to write to, and then whatever folders that you want to replicate over to that Synology NAS. At this next screen, I suggest using the first option, which is send the initial copy over the network. But one thing you have to be aware of is that second checkbox that says sync immediately. So as soon as you set up this task, if you leave that checkbox enabled, it will start to sync all of your files. Now the way it works is on the destination NAS, all of your files are going to sync there and they will be read only. So if you're syncing a massive folder, especially if this is in an enterprise environment, you might want to schedule this off hours. But if this is at your house on your local network, then you can make the decision on your own. The next section is going to ask you to set up a replication schedule. So the important thing to understand here is that snapshots are incremental, but they can add up to a decent amount of space over time. So you can choose to do this daily or you can choose to do it hourly. It really depends on the type of folder that you're setting up. So set a schedule and then at the next page, you're going to see a retention policy. So retention is basically how many versions of your snapshots it will store. So generally, I use the advanced retention policy section, and that basically allows you to define how many daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly snapshots you want to keep. So everyone's needs will defer, but change this to be whatever you'd like to keep. The next page will ask you if you want to replicate scheduled local snapshots. So basically, if you have local snapshots and they're running daily, weekly, whatever it is, if you want to sync those as well, you can do that. If you don't want to sync those and you only want to run it based on the schedule you defined, you can ignore that checkbox. So once you select apply, everything will start to sync as long as you had that checkbox from earlier enabled. If you did not, your schedule will determine when the process will actually run. So like I said a little earlier, the destination is read only. So basically, if you have a source and a destination NAS, a replica folder will be created on that destination NAS and all of the files will exist there and they will be read only. If you delete the replication task, that read only folder on the destination NAS will change to be read write. So basically it's there for preservation at this point. If you ever delete the replication task, it will just be sitting there as a shared folder on that destination NAS. So at this point, everything is set up and configured. So based on whatever schedule you specified, the snapshots will sync from your source Synology NAS to your destination Synology NAS. At this point, we're going to take a look at how you can recover these files if you ever need to. 
So this part's a little confusing, so bear with me. Um, basically, you have two main options. You have a switchover and you have a failover. The main distinction is that when you perform a switchover, the source Synology NAS will sync the current data to that destination Synology NAS. So if you're thinking from a catastrophic standpoint, if your data was deleted for whatever reason and you can't recover it on that source Synology NAS, you probably don't want to use a switchover because it will sync either those corrupt files or the blank directory to the destination Synology NAS. So it's not all bad if you do that because technically what you can do is on the destination Synology NAS, you can then restore a snapshot and you can sync it back to the initial source Synology NAS, but it gets a little confusing at that point. Um, so the important thing to understand here is if the source data has been compromised in any way and you need to recover from the destination, you have to perform a failover. So we're going to quickly look at both options here. So to perform a switchover, you can select the recovery tab and then you can select action and switch over. Then you can finally select switch over. And what this is going to do, like I said, is it's going to sync all of your data currently from your source Synology NAS to your destination Synology NAS. And at that point, the roles change. So the destination becomes the source and the source becomes the destination. After you do this, both of the directories will have the exact same data. So if for whatever reason you indirectly did that and you didn't mean to, you'll have to restore on the destination NAS, which is now the source NAS, it gets a little confusing, um, you'll have to restore back from a snapshot. And then at that point, you can sync the data back to the initial source Synology NAS. So in summary, if your source data is corrupt or irrecoverable or anything, you do not want to do this. I'm just showing you how it works, but this is not what you want to do. You want to perform a failover. So we're quickly going to take a look at a failover. So a failover works basically the opposite. What it allows you to do is it allows you to say the source data is screwed up in some type of way. We are going to fail over to the destination and then we're going to reprotect the data on our source Synology NAS with the data from our uh, destination Synology NAS. So to simplify that, basically what we're doing is the data will stay the same as it currently is on the destination Synology NAS, and it will allow you to overwrite whatever got corrupt or messed up on the source Synology NAS. So to do that, you're gonna have to log into the destination Synology NAS, you're gonna have to go to the recovery tab and then select the folder and then action and force failover. What this is gonna do is it's going to change the source to the destination and the destination to the source, but it is not going to copy the data before it does that. That is the big difference between a failover and a switchover. So you'll have to give that a little while, but as soon as the failover is finished, what you can do is you can run a reprotect. Now a reprotect will take the correct data and it will sync it back to the NAS that was having the problem. So think of the failover and the reprotect basically as taking all of the data from the uh, destination Synology NAS and writing it back to the source Synology NAS. So if you've made it this far, it's definitely confusing. And if you're worried about conducting this, I highly suggest that you take a backup from the destination Synology NAS because those files are read only, they should still be there. Uh, take a backup. You can copy those using Windows File Explorer or your Mac or whatever it is, or even Synology if you want, uh, to a different shared folder. And at that point, you can kind of copy the files back and forth however you need to. So these are options if you need to do the whole folder in bulk, but you basically have a few different ways of doing it. I'm hoping that this made a little bit of sense because truthfully, uh, switchovers and failovers are somewhat confusing because they're not very well documented. So hopefully at least the demonstration on how it actually worked made sense if what I said didn't make sense because explaining the source and destination and how they switch, it can get confusing to say, you know, the source is now the destination, the destination is now the source. Um, it's, it's just a little confusing. So hopefully that made sense. If it didn't make sense, check out the written instructions. It will hopefully make a little more sense there. Um, and if that doesn't work out, just leave a comment and I'll do my best to get back to you. So there are benefits to using this over something like Hyper Backup, which I have a video for as well. I'll leave a pop-up for that now. Um, but there are also benefits to using Hyper Backup. So Hyper Backup creates a repository. It's portable. You can encrypt it. 
Um, so if you're using this to back up your data, say off site, you might want to use something like hyper backup. This is just another tool that you can implement if you'd like to. So like I said, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. I know that this topic was slightly confusing, but if this video helped you out, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more content like this, please consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks guys.